Ah, uh, shit. Sebastian Fondora has a broken nose, which means he will be out until September 27th. What does this mean for Terence Crawford, who just requested to become the WBO mandatory after Fundora's win over Tim Zhu? Say it ain't so. In this video, Boxing Ego will cook you up a plate. Let's dive in. Say it ain't so. After an absolutely brutal war with Tim Zhu, brand new champion, unified champion, Sebastian Fundora. It is now revealed that he will be on the sidelines as he has a broken nose. Terrence Crawford chose to go the WBO route. Looks like he wants to move up in weight class and fight against what was said to be the winner between Zhu and Fundora, which we now know is Fundora. Crawford last fought in July. So what does that mean right here and right now for Terrence Crawford? Unexpected stuff. The ego injury report is back. Bad news for Terrence Crawford. Crawford, again, he stated that he would petition. Like, if you guys follow my channel, you will know this. He went to Puerto Rico, which is the headquarters of Paco and the WBO. They have a rule within the WBO that if you're the super champion and then you're moving up one division, by default, you can petition to become the mandatory to the champion up there. Again, Fundora just beat Tim Zhu to become a WBO champion and the WBC champion at 154 pounds. So having that right and having two belts, Crawford wants to challenge Fundora. However, we now learn that there's some unfortunate news regarding Tim Zhu and his, or actually Tim Zhu, he had stitches, but there, so there's bad news because he has to heal and Sebastian Fundora also has bad news. So that just lets you know right here and now that the fight was an absolute war. It was a bloodbath, a very gory fight. If you're squeamish, you might want to stay away from that fight and not watch the replay. And in my opinion, I thought the fight should have been stopped because you have a guy who is a champion who very well could, you know, get stopped or lose because he had blood dripping and profusely pouring into his eye. So you didn't know how the fight was going to end. I was actually surprised that it went 12 rounds and Zhu was doing very good early before he got that cut. It was an accidental like elbow. You have to understand Fundura is very like kind of bony and lanky and skinny. And it was just a freak accident where the top of Zhu has a shaved head. So maybe that's easy access because he didn't have no hair or nothing to pat it. And then he got scraped some kind of way with the guy's sharp elbow and then he's just bleeding so very gory fight it was a bloodbath and now this holds certain things up and i'm going to explain make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video i'll fully break it down for you bad news for terrence bud crawford and i'm going to explain and show you why so you guys see this this is box rec you see this disclaimer this warning this notice for sebastian fedora who's now has a record of 21 one and one suspended by the nevada athletic commission until september 27th 2024 so based on this nose injury he's suspended you guys see it furthermore tim zoo is suspended his suspension because it's is a different injury is until may 15th so what does this mean well let's talk about it, it says tim zoo and sebastian fundura suspended after bloody war as future plans take another twist both tim zoo and his opponent last week had a bloody war in a world title fight sebastian fedora has received a six-week suspension from boxing as a result of the injury sustained 
right? It said Nevada Athletic Commission INSEC announced also that Tim Zhu will not be able to return to the ring until May 15th after he was left with 10 stitches on his scalp accidental Fundora elbow, which I talked about earlier in the video. And here you guys see it. Fundora suffered a broken nose, a broken nose in the first round, which has seen him provisionally suspended until September 27th. Again, Tim Zhu's suspension right there. Fundora, so everything checks out until the 27th of the month. So everything is making perfect sense because Fundora has a broken Humpty, Humpty dance nose. But Insac stated if Fundora sees an ENT, ear, nose, and throat specialist before then and is cleared, his suspension will also be over as soon as the 15th of next month. So they've extended it out to September 27th. So what does that mean? That means Fundora must now go to a ENT specialist, do whatever procedural things that they need him to do, and then they'll give an updated prognosis. So I wouldn't, since it's pushed out till September 27th, I wouldn't bank on Fundora being available in May if he has a broken nose. Fundora is already set to see an ENT for treatment on his broken nose, but reportedly isn't planning to fight until November regardless, roughly the same time frame Zoo is planning. And Dan Rayfield captured that in an update in his particular Fight Freaks Unite. So in this article, so I'm giving you guys all the information. I will make this available to Dan Rayfield's the link. So make sure you guys check him out and read his article. Fundora promoter Lukowitz, Samson Lukowitz, Sebastian Fundora's promoter to Zoo. It says the rematch whenever you're ready, basically. And he's saying that there was a verbal rematch. They were so eager to make the fight that they made it and everyone agreed. Everything was amicable that they didn't get in writing. But he's basically Samson Lukowitz, Fundora's trainer, is saying that, you know, my word is bond, you know, is good. Says we're all so eager to make the fight. Our agreements were made verbally, right? And here's the part. It says whatever his next fight is, Fundora won't be back in the ring until at least November. That November rain, Guns N' Roses. Samson Lukowitz told Fight Freaks Unite that Freddie Fundora, Sebastian's father, and his trainer told him that his son would need the layoff in part because of the nose injury. Both fighters proved their tremendous heart in the fight. Samson, the, the promoter, said the elbow was a complete accident, but it showed Tim Zhu's greatness in continuing to fight when he could have quit. Sebastian Fundora was swallowing his own blood for 10 rounds and still able to beat one of the best in the division. Sensational fight. And we are ready to do it again when Tim Zhu is ready. Congratulations to both fighters. There were no losers on Saturday night. Boxing fans won. So Errol Spence wants a crack at Sebastian Fundora. And Tim Zhu, we know, wants a rematch with Sebastian Fundora. But nonetheless, he can't fight anybody until his broken nose is settled. Bad news for Terrence Crawford. Now, the reason I say bad news for Terrence Crawford is because he tried to circumvent PBC, go through the WBO. No one knew that this fight with Tim Zhu and Fundora would be such a crazy, bloody affair, and both fighters would basically get suspended. So now we got to wait and see. But a couple things can happen here, and I'm going to do my best to explain it. To my knowledge, Sebastian Fundura, he can request through the WBO committee to oversee the latest updates involving his health. Because just like Kell Brook, this, this is a different sanctioning body, but hear me out. Kell Brook fought Golovkin, 
Hey, no, guys. Hey, Max is big drama. Big his punch is nothing. Tick, 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 tick. Right? Kell Brook fought Golovkin. His eye got bashed up, and he had an orbital, broken orbital. So he, his eye was banged up and orbital damage. IBF, his mandatory at welterweight, because he jumped up to fight Triple G at middleweight. His IBF mandatory was against none other than Errol Spence Jr., right? So Errol Spence Jr. was waiting for his mandatory shot with the IBF. Kell Brook put in the request to the IBF, hey, my eye is messed up from the Golovkin fight. Give me some time before I fight Errol. So he got a break and didn't have to fight with a broken orbital, you know, and they granted an exemption and a medical exemption. So I believe the WBO has a similar protocol. If it's approved, they basically you submit your ENT in this case, your ear, nose and throat doctor, their diagnosis, prognosis, your healing time, you know, whatever. Submit that information over to the necessary parties, which is the WBO and then their committee. I think they either vote or decide if this is an acceptable excuse and either a they would give uh sebastian fundura some kind of exemption and say you don't have to fight crawford you're mandatory because he he's probably moving up and he's pushed a button on that push the button push the goddamn button push the goddamn button push the button so crawford wants to push the button for the rematch so that could buy him some time basically because both tim zoo and fundora but Fandora being the champion, his nose is messed up. So he's not in a, a position to fight. Or another option could be if the WBO hears this and they feel like we're not going to allow you to sit on that belt and hold the WBO. You're not allowed to hold our belt. The show must go on kind of deal. Then likely what would happen there is he would be relinquished or stripped of his belt the WBO belt, and then they would f have a fight for the vacant belt, you know? I mean, I guess technically they could just give it to Terrence Crawford, but that seems kind of weird. So I would imagine they would have Terrence Crawford fight the number one ranked person within the WBO in that division. The number one ranked person is Josh Kelly. So it's all dependent on the information that Fundora can produce and what the WBO decides if they believe this is reasonable and then that's next. So the reason I say bad news for Terrence Crawford is he hasn't fought since July. You have a man who is earmarked to be suspended, who has the belt that you want to fight. You want to fight him because he's the winner and he can't fight at least as of me recording this video until September 27th. So by that time, you have been out of the ring like 14 months or so because you last fought a great performance, by the way, against Errol Spence in July. So Crawford, you're, you're going to move up in weight, be out of the ring 14, 15 months, unless you can get an in-betweener type of fight. And with no promoter and being a free agent, I don't know how feasible that is. Plus Crawford has some serious demands in terms of how much money he's expecting, how much money he wants and what he wants for compensation. According to Fundora's promoter, Samson Lukowitz, he's saying that Terrence Crawford wants $15 million to hop in the ring. Who's coming up with that for Terrence Crawford if none of his numbers and paper, he's not a draw. He's not a pay-per-view attraction. So who's going to come up with that type of money even though he's a talented fighter to see crawford fight most businesses aren't in the business to quote unquote lose money so at the end of the day i don't know if that makes sense furthermore the other issue with this is this you have crawford who has never fought at 54 neither has errol spence but samson fundora's promoter already told you that he believes a uh, Errol Spence fight, despite him losing badly to Crawford, Errol Spence fight would still be more lucrative because he comes from Texas and they can pack out the AT&T Stadium 
and Errol Spence is still a big draw despite coming off of a loss directly, which makes perfect sense. And I agree, Errol Spence is a bigger name, comes from a bigger state, so that fight makes sense. Plus, the other issue is you have the verbal agreement that we just went over from Team Fundura and his promoter and Tim Zhu's side. And he's saying in this article, hey, we're ready for the rematch whenever you are. So here's how this works. If Fundura fights anybody not named Terrence Crawford without the approval of the WBO, he loses his belt. So meaning if the Tim Zhu fight, if you did a rematch because you didn't fight Crawford, you will likely be stripped. This is what happened to this is how Tim Zhu kind of got his belt because Jamal Charlo, Jamel Charlo fought Canelo. And instead of fighting him, who was the mandatory, Tim Zhu was Jamel Charlo's mandatory. They stripped Jamel Charlo for fighting Canelo Alvarez. So if they're saying that we have a verbal contract, there's two far more lucrative options for Fundura. This is just a mess for Crawford. Point blank, period. It's a pure, uncut, unadulterated mess because both fighters had such a brutal war, Fundora and Zhu, that they're all banged up and suspended from May to September. So they're probably just going to go on vacation. They can't. Sp I know Fundora for a fact, you can't have a broken nose and immediately start sparring because you'll, you'll re aggravate it, re break your nose if you don't give it proper time to heal, right? So he won't be able to spar or anything until his uh, specialist gives him the word. And his team is already telling you that they're not going to be back in the ring until November. So they want to give the war wound since it was such a, I mean, the man had blood. It looked like blood clots coming out of his nose. It was like bleeding pretty profusely. You can see it at the beginning of this video with that picture that I used, right? So... This just spells trouble. Crawford's age 36. He'll be 37 this year, if I'm not mistaken. Fundura is suspended. Tim Zhu suspended. Fundura is suspended longer. He won't be able to train till possibly September, October. Doesn't plan to come to the ring till November. Crawford doesn't have a promoter. So what is he going to do? He's just going to sit on the sidelines and hope and wait for something. You know, even if he gets the WBO to strip Fundura for not being ready or being injured, which kind of seems a bit weird because it's not like he was paintballing and doing something extracurricular and then he got this nose injury. He got the injury sustained at work boxing and we all watched it. And it's clear that he's not capping. I mean, he has like plugs in his nose and I mean, you can see the amount of blood he was losing and that's why I made the fight so bloody. He had blood all on his chest, and blood on each other. It was just, it was just a pretty graphic fight, right? So, I'm curious how this plays out. Errol Spence Fundora bigger fight. Tim Zoo rematch bigger fight with a better, like a better backstory. And it's funny because the Bud Buddies, the Terrence Crawford radical fans. They're saying that Fundora has no shot to beat Bud Crawford, but then they're upset and saying that's the best fight because the WBO rule of the super champion can become the mandatory. Why would you want to see the fight that you believe won't be competitive? That's what they're saying. The Crawford radicals are saying that Fundora would be destroyed and no match for Crawford. So you would rather see the fight that is the least competitive no real backstory. He's not aligned with PBC. So he would be kind of this odd man. He's harder to deal with. I, I just really don't see that happening. For me, I could see a couple different scenarios. And I definitely think Errol Spence Jr. or Tim Zhu rematch makes a lot more sense, especially from a business perspective. They're easier to deal with. In-house fights are easier to make. And... You know, I don't know. I, I think Crawford made an egregious mistake not doing a multi-year or multi-fight deal with PBC and trying to go around them going through the WBO. 
now they have even less reason to try to accommodate you right and worst case scenario he could just say and riddick bow the belt get rid of the belt and say i'm fighting tim zoo the crowd wants the tim zoo fight because again like i said there's a backstory there tim zoo was doing very well until he got this nasty cut and couldn't see and there's a lot of people including myself who truly believe that had that that cut not occurred the outcome very well could have been different i mean this man had a broken nose in round two and then he gets cut so fundura's nose was already broken imagine if tim zoo could see perfectly and wasn't pawing wiping blood out of his eye every couple of seconds so it was a pretty rough fight a pretty brutal and grueling fight and i wouldn't mind errol spence or a run back of fundura versus tim zoo to kind of set the record straight and then from fundura's own promoter samson lukowitz he's telling you that from a business percent perspective these fights make a lot more sense than crawford who they'll make the least amount of money with and i agree with that also bob arum told you that crawford's numbers did not deliver i mean some of his pay-per-views and stuff came out i can pull up articles where bob arum says he loses money on every terrence crawford fight literally literally so it's it's rough it's rough for terrence crawford look i pulled it up just like that bob arum look it says bob arum we've lost money on every crawford fight i don't make anything up on my channel top ranked promoter bob arum says he lost money on all of crawford's fights and he's not a pay-per-view draw this is his old promoter speaking the 34 year old wbo because he was 34 at the time wbo welterweight crawford contract with top rank expired and then the other thing is crawford's fighting infrequently notice how old media on twitter especially they'll count every pbc fighter that they feel is inactive they'll count the the precise amount of days that they've been out of the ring oh they gervonta davis has been out the ring this long oh jamal charlo how is he still a champion he's been inactive for 896 days or whatever it's been before he fought jose benavidez crawford continues to fight one time a year per his own decisions instead of being active and he's holding and hogging up all the belts and no one seems to care but boxing ego the other thing is outside of the ibf belt crawford has all the belts at 147. if you're making this play to fight at 54 then why don't you get rid of all the 47 pound belts so the guys like jerron boots ennis and stanny onis who are very well deserving you know even mario barrios and, and warriors like that can try to make their name make more money and put on good fights for the remaining belts the vacant belts but crawford he's playing kind of a weird game where he said he wanted to fight errol spence in a rematch at 47 errol wanted it at 54 but then now he's talking about moving to 54 to fight fundura versus zoo winner which we now know is fundura but then he won't let go of the hardware at 147 like versus a devin haney devin haney was undisputed too youngest undisputed in boxing history devin haney when he scheduled the regis pro grade fight he said bye bye to the belts and bye bye to lightweight and just fully moved up so why is crawford not doing the same thing he'd rather hold basically you're holding up you got your foot in 47 still because you still have the hardware and the belts and then you're you're clamoring for this mandatory shot as a super champion at 54 and now 47 remains stale in terms of turning over new champions outside of jerron boots ennis who got gifted or emailed a belt it's just really weird and then now he hasn't fought like i've said throughout this video since last year last july great performance with errol spence and then Fundura's suspended. So I can't wait to see how this, this turns out. But everything I said has been 100% factual.